Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam, board certified facial plastic surgeon. I specialize in facial rejuvenation. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about a really important topic, and that is how you can prepare for your facelift surgery. I'm gonna give you five tips on how to prepare so you can have a quicker recovery, less bruising, less swelling, and get to your final outcome as quickly as possible. Now you may not be having this surgery done with me, but you can apply these tips to just about any type of operation you're having done with any surgeon. So so take note of these things and also share them with friends and family because these are going to be generally good, sound advice for any type of surgical procedure you're going to have. So without further ado, let's break it down. So number one is preparation. There's a few things you have to remember. Surgery involves cutting. Cutting tissue involves bleeding. So what you wanna do is you wanna decrease the amount of bleeding that happens, so therefore you have less bruising, less swelling, because blood can cause, obviously, bruising, but also is a huge reason why people swell after surgery. So very, very important, there's some things that you wanna eliminate from your day-to-day two weeks before and two weeks after. Anything that can make you bleed will increase your risk of bruising and swelling after surgery. So what are those things? Number one is things that are called NSAIDs. NSAIDs are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So those are things like ibuprofen, Advil, those categories of drugs. Aspirin can make you bleed. There's a lot of herbal medicines that actually can make you bleed as well, like ginger, um, ginkgo biloba, all these different uh, categories of things, turmeric. So what we tell our patients is, for two weeks before surgery and two weeks after, get off all of your normal vitamins and herbs, and we're gonna organize you on what we need you to do before the surgery. Alcohol, believe it or not, can make you bleed. Now, there's also, um, if you're having face of surgery, there's a big one, and that is smoking. Smoking, the nicotine actually in smoking can cause what's called vasoconstriction, which is a shrinking of the blood supply. When that blood supply gets shrunk, what ends up happening is the tips of the, the skin flap that we're raising as part of the facelift can become devoid of blood, and as a result, you could have necrosis. And if you've never seen that before, definitely want to avoid that. that the image of that should be enough to scare you into stopping smoking before a face of surgery. So smoking is a huge one, and here's the caveat. You actually need to stop smoking six to eight weeks before a face of surgery. So if you're listening to this and you're planning on having a facelift, it's really, really a good excuse to stop smoking altogether, because once you stop it for six to eight weeks, you're pretty much home clear for, for quitting smoking altogether. But you wanna make sure that you stop smoking six to eight weeks before and for at least a month or so afterwards. Very, very important. Now, here's the caveat to that. Um, it's the nicotine. So if you think you're gonna stop smoking but you're gonna take nicotine gum or patches, etc., vaping, all of it, includes nicotine, that's the culprit. Even one or two cigarettes during that period of time can put you at much higher risk for skin flap necrosis. So that's that. Number two vitamins. So what we do for our patients is we get them organized on this um, vitamin recovery system. This is from Vitamedica, which is actually a very simple and very nice uh, approach. It's a basically, it's a two week program and it organizes you on day to day and you take a, a set before surgery and you take a set afterwards. And basically this is just a supercharged high concentration of all the basic vitamins including bromelain. Bromelain is an anti-inflammatory, which is in here. In addition to that, what I have my patients typically take, I have them take vitamin K, and this is a 100 microgram vitamin K. We give them 10 of these tablets to take every single day, and they do this for about two weeks before. Some diets are, are low on vitamin K, green leafy vegetables, etc., has high concentrations. If you don't um, have a high concentration of vitamin K, this will help potentially improve your risk of bleeding after surgery, especially if there's a deficiency. The second is Arnica Montana. Basically, Arnica is a um, anti-inflammatory, decreases bruising, decreases swelling. So patients will start to take this just a few days before their procedure and for about a week or so afterwards. Again, um, this is all part of a kit that we, uh, we give our patients um, surgically, but you can always get this um, outside, of, uh, outside of your surgeon's practice. So number three, elevation. So when you are sleeping, if your head is flat, 
Just like any other surgery, if, if your affected body part is below your heart, you're gonna end up swelling a lot. You're gonna bring a lot of blood flow to those areas. So you wanna basically make sure that you're sleeping elevated, a couple pillows, a wedge, or if you have one of those beds in our recovery homes that we put our patients in postoperatively, we have um, beds like those therapeutic beds that actually elevate them, but you can either use uh, pillows, wedges that you can buy from Amazon, etc. but you wanna be slightly elevated. You want your heart um, to be below your head so that way the blood flows downward. And that's a really important thing to decrease swelling and uh, fluid retention postoperatively. Number four is icing. Now, icing in the first couple days is really important, but there are some caveats to that. You don't want to put direct ice on the surgical flap because remember the surgical flap, the skin has been lifted. It is already a little compromised from a blood supply point of view. So if you put direct ice on there for too long, you're gonna really potentially cause uh, thermal burns and and, uh, and even lose some of that skin, which is a terrible, terrible thing to happen after a beautiful facelift. So we generally recommend ice packs, which actually start to heat up as soon as they apply to the skin. Frozen peas are really good. Um, putting a layer in between true ice and, uh, and the skin is really good and they also have these different types of masks that you can buy online that basically function as a fully encompassing facial mask that have that gel that cools down and then that starts to heat up so it doesn't risk burning the skin as it uh, as it goes on from a thermal burn. So icing is really important. That decreases inflammation, decreases the blood flow right out of the gates so that um, improves the overall um, recovery period significantly. Number five, and this might be a little counterintuitive because I'm gonna say two different things here. One is I'm gonna tell you that you should really, really take it easy, meaning just chill for at least two weeks after the surgery. And that means don't bend your head down, keep your neck and jawline elevated because you know being like this after surgery, especially if you've had neck work done, can cause the skin to bunch up. Don't lift anything heavy off the ground. You wanna basically eliminate any physical activity during this period of time because here's why. A little bit of physical activity, these early little blood vessels, they've just been cut, they formed a very brand new clot on it. Any type of pressure can cause that blood, blood vessel to burst and you can end up getting a hematoma, which is the most common complication after uh, facelift surgery. So taking it easy, being calm, relaxing. Now here's the caveat. I don't want patients to be laying down all day long or even laying in a bed all day long because when you're sitting straight in a couch or sitting upright, Blood flow, lymphatics, all of that is starting to drain downward. And that keeps the blood from, from sitting in the face, from the fluids from sitting in the face. When you're laying down, same as the point I made with the elevation, you're gonna end up being more and more swollen. So there's been lots of studies that have been done, especially in the rhinoplasty um, literature that shows sitting upright is the best position to be in after surgery. So keep that in mind, um, sit upright after surgery, don't lay down. A lot of people think resting is the same as laying in bed. Not a good idea. And keep your chin elevated. And those are the basic things. Those are the five basic things that will help you get through your recovery as safely, as soundly as possible. And remember at the end of the day, hopefully um, you have this going into surgery, but trust your surgeon, trust the process because it can be a little rough in the beginning, but in the end, it's gonna be fantastic. You're gonna be glad you did it. And uh, ultimately you're gonna look as young as you feel, which is really what this is all about. So uh, guys, I hope this helped you. Uh, again, you can apply these basic principles to any type of surgery you're gonna have done, especially um, you know using uh, vitamins and, and uh, herbal, um, supplements before surgery, very, very helpful. If you haven't already, hit subscribe, follow me along. I'm gonna be sharing lots of information like this about the field of cosmetic surgery, facial rejuvenation, and uh, skincare. So subscribe so we can share those uh, one to two videos a week with you, as well as uh, share this along with friends and family so they can get uh, an opportunity to follow this very uh, keeping it real type of an approach towards uh, these convoluted subjects. And I try to keep it very simple for you guys. Um, if you like it, hit like. If uh, you have any questions or comments, hit it down on the, uh, the comment section. I will do my best um, to reply as many of them as possible. Thanks again, guys. Till next time, Dr. Amir Karam.